Hey, what's going on folks? Trey here. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to turn your boring old monitor from this to this. This is Ambilight, or what is known as Ambilight. So basically, it's a series of LEDs that run along the back of your monitor being controlled by a microcontroller, which is known as an Adreno. I'm going to show you guys the steps on how to do this and what you need for this project. It's fairly simple, fairly cheap. And it's just a fun project to do. It gives your computer a little, or gives your monitor a little bit more flair when you're watching videos. Uh, right now, I got a visualizer running. I will leave in the description below. I will also leave all the links for every component you need in the description below. So if you guys like what you see, please like the video, uh, subscribe to my channel, and feel free to leave a comment down below. And let's get started, guys. So now I'm going to go over the tools and materials you need for this project. So the first thing you'll need is a soldering iron. You can go solderless, but I would highly recommend using a soldering iron because it's going to be more of a permanent connection. Uh, there are solder solderless options out there, like this uh, L-shaped solderless connector you can get on Amazon for about 8 bucks for a 10-pack. But I would recommend going with soldering iron just because it's going to give you a more reliable connection. The next thing you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver. A small uh, number 0 Phillips screwdriver is going to work the best. You're also going to need a, a roll of uh, mounting tape. This is M3 mounting tape. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're also going to need a razor blade or an X-Acto knife. I'm using a razor blade tool. You're also going to need a pair of wire cutters slash wire strippers. You'll need a power supply. This is an AC-DC adapter. This is 5 volt, 8 amps. You can have anywhere between 5 to 10 amps, but make sure it's 5 volts. Uh, also, you need a DC female power plug. They sell this as a package deal on Amazon, so I'll leave that in the description below. You'll also need some breadboard wires. You don't need this many, but you'll need at least 12. You'll need an Adreno board. Um, I'm using the Mega 2560 myself. You can also use the Nano or the Uno, which is the most popular ones. You'll need the USB 2.0 uh, A to B that comes with it. You'll need your LEDs. Make sure you get these exact ones. These are the WS2812Bs or the WS2812s. Either one works. There are going to be 60 LEDs per meter, so you only need about two of them to do a 24-inch monitor. Okay, so now the first thing we want to do is clean off the back of our monitor. You're going to go ahead and put down a towel or a cloth in order to protect the monitor when you place it face down on top of it. Go ahead and pull off the monitor stand if you haven't done that yet. And now we're going to use some sort of cleaning solution to clean off the back of the monitor. I'm using a specific cleaning solution that's made for LCD screen TVs or electronics in general. And I actually had a malfunction where mine... Uh, spray bottle wasn't working right, so I just ended up popping off the top and pouring a little bit into a microfiber cloth. And just clean up the back of the monitor really well. You want to make sure you get out the gr dust and debris and the grease off the back of your monitor. You want a nice, clean surface to make sure your mounting tape adheres to the monitor well. So now we're going to figure out how many LEDs we need for the monitor. So starting from the bottom, going up, um, count out how many LEDs you need. And once you get to that stopping point, go ahead and cut right there. Do the same thing across the top. Count out how many LEDs you need. You're gonna rem uh, you need to count out and remember how many LEDs you have in total on the back of the monitor because you're gonna need that number later on in the video when programming the auto light. And it's pretty easy to cut these uh, LEDs. They're pretty clearly marked, basically right in the middle between those connectors. Um, and once you get all of them cut to size, you want to make sure they're all flowing the same way, starting from the bottom left going up to back to the left, going down and back to the right, basically uh, clockwise you want to make sure they're flowing. So the next thing you want to do is clear off your station and set up for a soldering station. Go ahead and lay out your LEDs. you got your two horizontal LEDs, your two vertical LEDs, and you got three sets of breadboard wires. And I actually color code them on to match the same as the wires that are pre-installed on the LEDs themselves. So it's red, green, and white. You want to go ahead and cut off each end of the breadboard wire as shown and then go ahead and strip off each end to expose the wire as shown right here. Go ahead and do it to all the uh, breadboard wires. And once you get it done, they're going to look like this. And I actually went back uh, later on and cut them down a little bit shorter to about a half an inch. Um, you don't really need this much wire. You, it's a short distance. And the next step, we're going to show you... Uh, with the razor tools for. You don't necessarily need this part if you have the WS2812s that are not waterproof. These are the waterproof ones so they come with this clear plastic coating on there. So basically all I'm doing is just cutting off the end, expose the uh, contact points to solder the breadboard wires to as you can see. And then grab me a wire and make sure you folks line up the wires to the corresponding points on the LED strip. Um, I was trying to show you right here 
or to connect the red wire on the LED strip, but obviously the back can work, you can't see it, so I'll go ahead and explain it to you. So the red wire is going to be connected to the voltage point, it's going to say 5 volt on the uh, LED strip. The, next to, the one next to it in the middle is going to be the data point, so that's where you're going to put the green wire. And the last one is going to be the ground point, and that's where you're going to put the white wire. And this is what it looks like when you get it all soldered on there. So take your time with this, guys. Make sure you got a strong connection for each wire. And this is what they're all going to look like when you get them finished. Um, this is the main one that starts from the bottom left. This is the one that goes across the top to the right. This is the right LED strip that goes down to the bottom. And this is the one that goes across the bottom. So in this step, I'm actually going to do a little something extra that you guys don't have to do if you have brand new LED wires. But for me, uh, I'm using recycled ones, so I need to remove this end piece uh, connector, which isn't a hard thing. I'll show you guys how to do it if you guys ha or happen to be in the same situation I am. Uh, so basically, you're just going to desolder these wires from the, uh, from the LED strips themselves. It's pretty easy. I'm actually using this tool, which is called a solder sucker. Funny name, right? Um, but it helps when removing solder. Um, got those off, good to go, move on to the next step. So now we're going to organize our LEDs in the same fashion we had on the back of our monitor going clockwise. We're going to start in the bottom left corner and go up, over to the right, back down, and then back over to the left. One thing I forgot to point out earlier guys is that they all have these little arrows on here right here as you see. Um, they all go in this, you want to make sure that all those arrows are going in the same direction on each LED. Um, so now we're as we're soldering, uh, make sure you're getting the corresponding wire to each corresponding um, points on the LED. So the red's going to be to the 5 volt, the green's going to be to the data, and the white's going to be to the ground. Um, take your time with this, guys. Make sure you get a strong connection. Make sure they're not going to come loose or anything. And once you get done, there's going to look something like this. And I know mine isn't the best soldering job. Um, this is literally the second time I've ever soldered. But the main thing is you just want to make sure they're a strong connection. You want to test, test the durability, pull them around, play around with them a little bit. Make sure that it's not going to come undone really easily. So now I'm going to test and make sure these LEDs are working properly with this gadget right here. This is an LED controller. This is called a Dream uh, LED controller. Comes with a little remote. Um, basically plugs into a DC uh, power supply on one end. That power supply that I bought. And the other end is just going to plug directly into the LED lights themselves. And the reason why I got this is because the LED lights I'm using are recycled. And I tested to make sure each LED was working before I even made this video. So now I'm going to text, test to make sure the connections are uh, properly made with the soldering iron. Um, as you can see right here, the ground wire on this connection actually came undone while I was soldering. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and just hold the ground wire down just to see if they come on. They actually do work as you can see here so now I gotta fix that point of connection so I didn't get actually record this part um, I thought I was recording but my camera shut off so I'm just gonna show you what guys what I did so hey I went ahead and resoldered that ground wire as you can see right here but I also added two extra wires and actually added extra red wire as you see right here is for the voltage and the other wire I added was an extra uh, uh, ground wire as you see the extra white wire right here so these two wires uh, obviously are stripped at the ends, so I'm going to take the uh, DC female uh, plug that I showed you earlier, we're going to screw each point, there's a positive and a negative point on this plug, screw each one of them, and then we're going to slide the negative, which is the white, the ground, into the negative end, and then the positive, which is the voltage, is the red wire, into the positive end. But as you can see, the wires aren't the same length, so I have to cut them just a little bit more, strip them down, uh, make sure they're the right length so they both slide right into the uh, female DC power port. Um, you know, red to the positive and white to the negative. You slide them right in there and just screw them down with a the screwdriver. They have a clamp in there so it holds them in place. And there we go, we've got our female DC power plug attached to our LED strip, and that's just going to be able to power our LED strip. Now the next thing we're going to do is clear off our station again and bring back out our towel or cloth, cover it up again, we're going to bring back out our monitor, um, place it face down onto the cloth as shown, and then we're going to bring out our scissors and our mounting tape. And as the same way we did the LEDs, we're going to measure how much uh, tape we need by pressing it along the side. Then we just snip it right there and then we just cut it in half because we don't really need to waste more mounting tape. It's pretty thick tape so just cut it right in half. Um, place one on one side, one on the other side as shown. And we're going to repeat the same process for the top and bottom parts. Cut it 
it to length and then cut it straight in half. Now once we finish uh, applying the mounting tape to the monitor, we're going to take out our LEDs and start peeling off the protective layer to reveal the adhesive side and start applying the LED strips all the way around clockwise like we've been doing the entire video. Once we got all of them applied to the monitor, we're going to test and make sure they're working properly. We're going to use the same um, microcontroller that I've been using before in order to test. It looks like everything's working fine. It's got a rainbow uh, color wheel pattern going on. So after we get our monitor hooked back up to our computer and back at our workstation or desk, we're going to get two more breadboard wires. We're going to get a white one for ground and a green one for data. Then we're going to plug it into the same connector we've been plugging the uh, microcontroller to test out. So we're going to use the green one for data. It's going to be the center pin. Plug that right into there. And then to the right of that is going to be the white uh, ground pin. So plug that one right into there. And that's all you need. You don't need a red one. Now we're going to get our Arduino board out. It doesn't matter which one you have. Like I said before, I have the Mega 2560. You can have the Uno. You can have the Nano. They all work the same. We're only going to plug our pins into two points. So we're going to plug our ground into the ground right here. You can see on the side where it says ground. And then we're going to plug our green into pin 6. So data pin goes into pin 6. And then ground pin goes in obviously where it says ground. And then you're good to go. And then you plug the uh, Adreno into the computer via USB. USB B to USB A 2.0. And now we're going to get started on the uh, software side of things guys. Stay tuned. Alright folks, in this part of the video I'm going to show you how to get the uh, software you need in order to get your Adreno working with the LEDs. Uh, you need three different programs. Actually two programs and a code. So here, I'll leave all these in the description below. So I'm going to go to Home. This will be the first page you go to is Adreno.cc. Go to Software. Scroll down to uh, download the uh, Adreno IED. You can get it for Windows or Mac. I'm using Windows, obviously, so I click this. I'm using. I'm just going to download straight from the App Store. You can do installer or zip file, whatever you want to do. And the next thing you want to go to is go to this page on GitHub. I'll send this in the. I'll put this in the description as well. This is a uh, code for the the Adreno itself. This is the Adelite WS2812. And the, the WS2812 are the LEDs I'm using. So. This is specifically made for those LEDs. So you download this one, go to clone slide or download, and it'll be just these two files. And the last thing you want to download is the AmbiBox. And I'll leave this in the description as well. And you just download the first link, it's the most up to date version. After you get those three downloaded, extracted, put them where you want them, you're going to uh, open the first program. This is the Adreno IED. This is how you put the code onto the Adreno itself. So when you open this up, this is going to be the first window you see. And you want to go to File, Open, and then locate wherever you save the uh, Adelite WS2812. This is the file you need, or the code. You need to open that code, Hit Open, and this will pop up. You can get an exit out of this one. And the only thing you're going to change on here is the number of LEDs. And for me, it's 90. So whatever LEDs you put on the vacuum monitor, you count those up and you. Uh, Put that, plug that in here, and this data pin is going to be from how your Adreno sends the message, or which pin it uses to send the uh, c uh, data through the LEDs in order for it to work. So just leave that default, which we plugged in earlier, which is six. Where you could, I think you're able to change it to whatever you want, but I think the default is six. Anyway, the next thing you want to do is go to Tools. You're going to change some settings in here. Um, you want to go to Board and change it to whatever board you, you have. Um, for me, I'm using the Mega 2560. Some people might be using Nano or Uno. Those are two most popular ones, but I'm using the 2560. You can select that, and then you go down to Port, and it's going to be automatically set on COM1. You want to go down to whatever board you, sh uh, you select. It's going to be the second part. It's going to be COM3, usually, what I've seen. And just go ahead and select that one. And that's all you're doing on that part. And then you want to save it in order, in case something happens with Adreno board, or in case the code gets uh, reset or something. Go ahead and save it just in case you need it again. And then you click upload. And I'm not going to do it because I don't want to screw anything up. I already got it uploaded. It's going to tell you everything's okay at the bottom. And then your LEDs on your uh, computer or monitor is going to flash RGB, red green, red, green, blue, and that's it. It's going to cut off from there. And that's how you know you've uploaded the code to the Adreno itself. And then that's going to be the Adreno, that's going to be it for the Adreno side of things. Um, 
and then the last thing you're gonna do is open the ambi box go ahead and open that up I've already got it running because I've already got my LEDs running so when you first open this this up you're not gonna see this checked on you're gonna see just this and the first thing you're gonna change is go to device at the bottom right here click device and make sure it's set on Adelaide because that's the uh, that's the program you're running onto the Adreno that you're using and this is how it's gonna send the signal is through the Adelite and from this part we want to go to show capture areas and this is how I've already got it set up for my monitor but it's gonna look completely different when you first set it up it's gonna be really big squares it's not gonna be laid out right it's gonna look all out of whack so you're gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking on this part so in order to do that you go down to more settings um, you want to go to uh, to wizard capture zone you want to go ahead and actually before you click that change some stuff at the bottom um, it's going to be default for RGB this is the WS uh, 2812's so already that's the default for them you want to change your number of LEDs for me I've got or the number of zones which is the LED so for me it's going to be 99 again go ahead and select COM3 as the same as you put in your uh, Adelite software on the Adreno part of things and then you want to go up to um, wizard capture zone and that's going to automatically detect the sides of your monitor or screen whatever and it's going to put the LEDs where it thinks it is now for me this isn't the way I have it lined up for the number one spot in, this, in the right spot but it's going the opposite of way of which I need it to go so it's going around from the bottom to the left up to the right down so I need it to go from the bottom right go up to the top back to the left down and back over to the right Need, I need this to be the last spot. I need this to be the first spot. In order to do this, you're gonna have to. This is the tweaking part. For me, I want to start it on this side. I believe start it to the right side, direction zone, and I want to change the offset. For me, I think I just went backwards. Yeah, see, backwards two, and it started my number one spot at the bottom right. Went up, around this, and this is how I got it laid out on the back of my monitor. Make sure it's running the exact same way on the back of your monitor. Starting from the, uh, this should be the first point. This should be the last point. And for some reason, it does 99 right here in the middle. I don't know if it actually matters. I haven't seen any a difference in the performance of the LEDs. It might be a little off. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems to work. And then click apply after you've done all your settings. Just mess around with this, just to, just to know that, uh, just to figure it out. I mean, there's different aspects, and um, you can change any of these settings. But for me, this is this works. And then uh, apply it go ahead and close out of that and then it should be working then you want to use backlights and this is how you toggle on and on if, off your backlights whenever you want to shut them off um, you can go ahead and turn them on they should be working everything should be up and running if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below I'll try to help you out as best as I can and I'll show you a demo of how these work